Welcome to part two on candlestick charting, trading the markets. Now, as you see here, we have brought up multiple bars, by the way, part one, I will include the link to it in the description below this video. So you can go and check that out. And we're building up on part one right now. So now we're going to get to this way of simplifying candlestick patterns without learning all the different 618 Japanese candlestick patterns. I don't really know how many there are, but 618 sounds good since that's a Fibonacci. And uh, <laughs> As traders, we got to do Fibonacci numbers, right? Well, okay, not necessarily, but anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this very concept here to simplify the reading of candlestick patterns, and that is whether they validate or invalidate the price section of the bar or bars that precede them. All right, now, what do I mean by that? All righty, here's what I mean. So as we talked about in the last video, the primary things that we're looking at are, first of all, is the range of the bar from high to low. So that's going to determine whether uh, it is a bearish or bullish bar, whether there's a lot of action, whether there's a lot of movement. Essentially, what that really means is, okay, during that period of time, this is a five minute chart, but it could be a daily, weekly, 60 minute, whatever. During that period of time, there was a lot of movement, all right, from a low to a high or a high to a low. So that's significant, as opposed to if we get a narrow range bar like we get here, where during that same period of time, there's just not much movement. Market didn't go anywhere. There wasn't a lot of activity. There wasn't a lot of um, supply demand imbalance. That would be a good way of looking at it. And so market just kind of stayed neutral, didn't really go very far. Again, a little bit of movement. It doesn't really have any significance. A lot of movement does. So that's the first thing from the high to the low. And then the second thing we look at is the real body in comparison to the wick. And that has significance as well. So for example, when we look over here, we see we have a wide range bar. And then when we look at the real body compared to the wick, and I'll use yellow for the wick, we see that, oh, it had a covered quite a bit of range down here, but guess what? It rejected those values. We closed here and the market did travel below that and tested those levels down there, but couldn't get enough traction. Again, supply, demand, imbalance. A lot of buying came in. So probably what's happening in the mind of the market participants is they're saying, hey, this is a better price now. Now we're considering this a, a deal or maybe a steal. It's like when you go to buy a car, right? Is it a good deal? Is it a bad deal or anything else? It's all the, now the market participants as a whole, the mass psychology is saying, okay, Yep, some price has been tested down here. Maybe a few people sold, but not many people. They're not willing to sell anymore. And so now the market comes in and starts buying and says, oh, this is a good deal. And so this is called, again, a rejection of value. Very important concept in trading. Those prices have been rejected. And so the market moves up. So the way that we would read this as far as does the bar validate or invalidate the bar before it is this way. So this uh, has a wide range bar from high to low. It engulfs the bar before it. So there's your classic engulfing pattern if you want to look at engulfing patterns. Um, and this is a very bearish bar and that's a very bullish bar. So the green bar here invalidates the bar before it. All right, so the green bar, mark that with yellow too. That bar invalidated the bar before because the bar before it was a bearish bar. And that is one way to understand this. Now, the other critical thing is where do these patterns occur on the chart? Where in the context of the chart do they occur? So just these candlestick patterns, in fact, the gentleman on my last video uh, actually made a very good comment that I totally agree with, where he said, um, you know, one engulfing bar might work and then the next 12 won't. And he's 100% correct. So we need to see these in context in what Alan, Alan Farley calls the landscape of the chart, or I think Steve Nissen called it the um, overall environment of the chart. I forget the exact terminology that he used. But pretty much all traders are very much aware of this, professional traders at least. So 100%, you cannot just trade these candlestick patterns in isolation. So what we're looking for is, again, 
This bar here is bearish, but guess what? We've already been going down for quite a while. So the odds of it continuing to go down are less. Now, there's never any certainties, but we're always putting together a number of uncorrelated variables to establish a probability scenario for trading. And one piece of evidence, one of those variables, will be your candlestick patterns, your price action. But that's just one variable, especially when you're just looking at one or two of our patterns like this. We need to take it in the context of the entire chart. So the more the market's been going down, you get sure you get a big bearish bar, but I'd rather take that big bearish bar up here. See, now there we get the same thing. This red bar, which is a fairly wide range bar, invalidates, I like that too, kind of enjoy my new yellow highlighter here, <laughs> playing with my new little toy here, invalidates the green bar before it. And therefore, sure, green bar bullish, green bar bullish, green bar bullish, red bar comes in at a swing high, again, engulfs, wide range, closes near the low, this one closed near the high, right, invalidates the bar before it. And that's the concept that we're looking at here. Now, what about this one? Let's just do a couple little quizzes here. So I've got uh, that one marked there with my cute little uh, magenta arrow. So this one is we've got a doji bar open closes at the exact same price. And it's not real wide range, not real wide range, but we basically a small rejection of value to the top, open and close near the bottom, uh, near the bottom third, near the bottom quarter probably actually. Therefore, we would say that, okay, it comes in the middle of the, um, of the impulse move. Therefore, yeah, it just doesn't change anything, right? So it's, uh, it just keeps going down. Now you could look at this one here and say, oh, but that's kind of a bullish bar. Again, sort of, kind of, but what makes it less significant is that, and we'll show a couple more things in future videos as we look at more of the context of the chart and how to put it all together. But again, it's a narrow range bar. This one's pretty narrow range too. Not, it's medium range, we'll say, medium range. And therefore, not as strong of a signal, all right? So this one here, I would say, okay, just doesn't really change the picture. Um, since we're already going down, the uh, general impulse move is down. You know, it just kind of confirms the down move in the middle. Now, one last question here. What about these two? This one's a little bit of a tricky question, although I've given you the answer already, but it's a good review. So does this green bar invalidate the red bar before it? And the answer is no, it does not. So again, a little tricky question. Why not? Well, again, it goes back to what I've already said. It's a narrow range bar. Therefore, in my mind, any narrow range bar is just significant. It's neutral. It's not bullish. It's not bearish. It's just neutral. It doesn't really change the sentiment of what the market has currently or previously been doing. Now, I do this sometimes in live webinars, and I actually start with this one. And inevitably, over 50% of the people will say that, yeah, it, um, I'm going to clear up my charts here a little bit. Uh, I start with this one and I play a little trick on them and I say, did that um, green bar invalidate the red bar before it? And over 50% of the people say yes, but this is a mind game. Okay, this is a uh, trick that your mind is playing on you. And it is the issue that we have, we can see the future, right, on this chart. We can see what happens next. And so it's called future bias in a sense where since you can see the future, we have this inclination where we think for some unknown reason that we should be able to nail every cycle high, nail every cycle low, and that there's a high probability way of determining every swing high and every swing low. And my friends, there is not. There is no way to determine every swing high and every swing low in the market. In fact, you won't be able to predict most of them. Actually, I don't even like to use the word predict at all. The way I like to use it is there is not a high probability scenario or signal for most swing highs and swing lows. And we only trade the ones where there are high probability situations, signals, triggers, but most of them don't have them. Most of them don't have them. So it's kind of a tricky question, but I do that on purpose because people assume, well, I could see this. Yep. So that's the low and that should invalidate that. But nope, 
the truth is there was no high probability signal there that that was going to put in a swing low and the market was going to go up. And you have to be careful now because this is where you can get traders remorse. You see the market go up and you say, oh, and you try to reverse engineer it and say, I should have been able to figure that out. And then you try to look at all kinds of ways at how you could have figured that out. That is a fool's errand. You will drive yourself crazy. Do not get caught up in that. Please, please don't get caught up in that. Only look for the high probability trades. And again, they don't occur as often as you probably think they do. In fact, I would say that this is one of the reasons why most beginning traders or even intermediate traders, even educated amateurs get tripped up all the time is because they just have, um, well, false expectations, unrealistic expectations. And the truth is that most professional traders, we trade a lot less than you probably think we do. We probably think a lot fewer trades than most of you expect. And that's one of the things you got to do is get a grip on the reality of trading. And that's just the honest truth. And once you accept that, then that's going to help you a lot. And by the way, one reason that people don't like that answer is because, well, they want to trade more. And I get it. I get it. I want to trade more too. One of my biggest challenges, in fact, I would say my cardinal sin as I was coming up through the ranks was over trading for that very reason. I wanted the action. I wanted more trades. I thought there would be more trades than there are in reality. And I struggled with that. And I, I turned and became profitable when I finally got more patient and accepted the reality that, you know what? Most of the time, the market is pretty much a random walk. And there's only a few times here and there that the market actually gives you high probability trade signal. So anyway, enough of that, but hopefully um, you got value out of all that. We're going to follow up with some more price action stuff here in future videos. So if you got value out of this, please share it with others with that beautiful little share button below. That's really the best thing that you can do. Share good things with good people. Give a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, uh, requests for future videos, put those down in the comments. That always encourages me to create more free tutorials for you. And I'm also going to give you another bonus, and that is a free trade setup called the Rubber Band Trade. It is my, well, one of my best trades. It's actually one of my simplest trades, and so I give it away for free because I know it's challenging to know you know, which trading instructor you should follow and so forth. So I figure the best way to do it is action speak louder than words. And if I just give you a trade setup for free and you make money with it, well, there you go. There's the proof. What better way to uh, find a trading teacher than that? So that's what I do. That's how I do it. So you can get that. It's called the rubber band trade. Just click the um, green icon in the top right hand corner of this video. Then I'll take you to the page where you can sign up for it and um, you'll get the video. It's about 26 minutes. Like I say, it's a very, very simple trade. It has a super high win loss ratio. And I still take this trade every day that it sets up.